good evening, everybody. Welcome to this Sunday evening meeting at the Lighthouse Baptist Church. Let's all stand together, please. Brother Todd's going to project the words behind me, and let's sing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Let's sing together. back this evening and I hope you had a good afternoon and uh, I know I did <clears throat> my my voice is kind of getting a little scratchy sounding but uh, I apologize for that uh, but appreciate you being back tonight we will have the Lord's Supper and um, there's still a few of those uh, outlines on the back chair there if you didn't get one this morning and you wanted one they're still back there and uh, let's have a word of prayer and then I'll make the announcements Lord Jesus thank you for this day and thank you for the opportunity we have to serve you Lord I just ask you to be with the service tonight we ask you to come meet with us, Lord, and then uh, obviously help us to do our part as far as remembering uh, what we're supposed to remember during the Lord's Supper. And Lord, I ask you to just have your will and way in this evening's service. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated and uh, continue to pray for Brother Raji and Miss Lou. Uh, she's doing a little better than him now, and uh, he's still battling with uh, uh, s several things. I believe it's all connected, and uh, so um, let's just pray for him. He's not doing well as far as his health. And so he usually does the announcements, but I'll, I'll do that for him tonight. Inside your bulletin there, we have uh, tonight we're having the Lord's Supper. Then on the 24th, normal during the morning time, Sunday school, Sunday church, morning church. Then that afternoon, we'll move it instead of 6 o'clock, uh, we'll move it up to 4 o'clock. And uh, we'll have a candlelight service, uh, lots of music, uh, things like that. It'll, it'll be a little different and uh, not just one like boom sermon, but kind of like a little... Uh, snippets all the way through with songs following it, things like that, and uh, then we'll have our candlelight at the end, uh, and so that you'll want to be th be here for that. And then on the 31st, we got Brother uh, Hagen Adams, Evangelist Hagen Adams, coming in, and uh, he'll be singing for us that morning and preaching, and then preaching that night uh, on the 31st. And uh, it'll be normal time; it will not be all the way until midnight. Uh, so those of you that uh, you know turn into a pumpkin or whatever it is before uh, you know midnight, we will we will just have normal service that day. We're not going to extend it. And then uh, coming up in January, uh, right now the first announcement we have for the book uh, book the month of January uh, is on January 17th. That's a Wednesday night service, uh, and then also on the 18th, a Thursday night service. We're having a uh, evangelist John Hamlin come in and uh, kick off our theme that for the next year uh, and things like that. And then we had some birthday announcements this morning. Brother Hudson's on the 19th. Uh, Brother Call, Dave Call, is on the 21st. Uh, John Couch is on the 22nd. And then Miss Sue's on the 22nd. So that was, that was a good day that day. Miss Sue and Brother John on the 22nd. So, and, uh, and then Miss Sherry Oldham's on the 23rd. And then Jesus is on the 25th, I think, is when everybody gets to celebrate his. But anyway, uh, so happy birthday to all of those. And uh, let's see. I, I think that's all the announcements I'm supposed to make. Uh, anyway, we, we, will, we will do the Lord's Supper right after the service this evening. So, Brother Terry. Let's take a hymn, though. Let's stand together. Let's turn to hymn number 20, please. Hymn 2 0. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross. Let's sing together hymn number 20. When I see the blood. Hymn 20. Christ our Redeemer died on I will pass over. 
a song special for us just before the preaching. blessing. Amen. You got your Bible, you can turn to 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3. And I will go a little shorter than normal on the end because of the Lord's Supper. But this will help us in preparation for the Lord's Supper. 
And of course, I'll read, there's two different passages in the Bible where, where, where it references the Lord's Supper. And I'll read one right before the invitation. And then, of course, we'll read one uh, during the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> but tonight we're going to talk about, but God giveth the increase. But God giveth the increase. And several places in the Bible where it talks about God giving the increase. And if it's going to be worthwhile or uh, obviously God honoring, it's going to have to be God giving the increase. We, we, we can uh, kind of figure it out on our own and say, like, you know, let's, let's force this issue or let's, let's do this and things like that. And the Bible indicates that, you know, there might be something accomplished, uh, but that'll be tried, uh, tried by fire. And it says all those things will be burned up if we're not letting God do the increase. And so we're going to read a little more scripture than we normally do uh, on, on, uh, on a sermon time. Uh, and so right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you unto spiritual, but unto carnal. And of course, this is Paul talking or writing a letter to the church at Corinth and kind of maybe reprimanding them a little bit, a little bit of stern encouragement <laughs> and said, you know, I'd like to be able to talk to y'all a little bit on a higher spiritual level, but I'm not able to yet. Uh, you haven't grown to that point, of course, and that was one of our that was our theme of this year. Uh, here we grow, let's all grow, and so that should be a desire for all of us to grow. We ought to be increasing. Uh, we're there's no, we can't stop increasing ages. Uh, we just mentioned several birthdays, and some of those are getting on up there, uh, and we can't do that. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, I, I stopped at 39. I'm not going to have any more birthdays. I'm just 39 for eternity. Uh, I don't know if that works. We can say it all we want to. Uh, but we're going to increase in age. Uh, sometimes we would uh, not like to increase our weight. Uh, you know, uh, you know we get on our scale in the bathroom and it says one at a time, please. And, uh, you know, so we, we would like to not have that happen. But, uh, you know, we have to you know stop eating a little bit. But anyway, but spiritually speaking we do want to increase we want to get more spiritual it's kind of like when you go to school uh, and you get your report card uh, at the end of the semester and they give a report on how you've done uh, if you're making all bad grades they're going to maybe do some testing uh, obviously maybe do some parent teacher conferences and try to get you know you in gear things like that why because they want you to increase um, you know, most, most schools do, most teachers do. They want you to learn the subject, so increase. And so spiritually speaking here, Paul, as the preacher, he wants the church to grow and increase spiritually. So he's, I, brethren, talking to the same people, I want to speak to you spiritually, but I can't because you're still carnal. Uh, as babes in Christ, you haven't grown. Uh, you're you know, immature. Uh, you, you, the, your growth has been retarded uh, and things like that. And it says here, I have fed you with milk. And not with meat. I've tried to, you know, I guess be considerate here and uh, give you some milk and uh, try to, to help you. I'm trying to do my part, the preacher was saying here. Uh, and then it says here, For hither too that will not be able to bear it, neither yet are you now able. And so when, when you first got saved and the church first got established, I was, I was giving you milk. And, and, and that was normal. Uh, but now I'd like to give you some meat, but you, you're not able to chew it. You still need, you still need um, milk. And so he was kind of getting on to him a little bit. And it says, For you yet are carnal, whereas you are among envying and strifes and divisions, and you are not carnal. Uh, are ye not carnal and walk as men? And so, you know, the issues that we're having, he's saying here at this church, the issues that we're having, you're envying each other and there's strife and things like that. Uh, there's divisions. Uh, we talked a little bit about that this morning, how that God wants us to be fitly joint together. And, uh, and not have divisions and strife, things like that. That's what he's telling. And he says here, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and the other saying, I am of Paulus, and are you not carnal? And so they were arguing, like, you know, well, I'm, I believe like Paul believes, and he's the one that reached me, he's the one that led me to Christ, so I'm all about Paul. Well, well, Paul, Apollos led me to Christ, and Apollos taught me the Bible, and, and this is what he, and so I'm all about him. And then he goes on and says here, who, who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers? Uh, by whom you believe, as, as the Lord gave to every man. Uh, and I have planted, and Paulus watered, and, but God gave the increase. Verse 7, so then neither is he, talking about Paul and Apollos here, that planteth anything, he that watereth anything, but God. And so, uh, again, kind of like our church here, uh, the church is 25 years old, and I, I, I don't think it's a, 
a carnal church. I don't think it's a baby Christian church. Uh, I think there's some mature Christians here. I think there's people that have grown and things like that. But uh, it'd be kind of like this, if, you know, the ones that's been here forever. You know, they say, well, you know, I, I was here when Brother Patrick was the pastor. And then some of y'all came a little bit, well, I was here when Brother Jonathan was the pastor. And then some of you newbies, you, well, I was here when Brother, Brother Stanley's been the pastor. All three of us are just servants. We're, we're basically nothing, all right? If anything's happened good, whether you came when Brother Patrick was here, when Brother Jonathan was here, or when I was here, that's just God. God's the one that saved you. God's the one that's blessing you. God's the one that's helping you increase. It wasn't anything we did. We're just servants. We're just spokespeople. And so if anything happened good in your life, anything happened good in this church, it was God giving the increase. So, yes, praise God we had two baptized in this, this morning. That's God giving the increase. We've had new members all year long. That's God giving the increase. Now, we can do our part. Paul did his part. Apollos did his part. But God's the one that blessed it. And so that's why we can't get into a, you know, a, you know, a, a tit for tat or an argument. Well, you know, I think, well, I, no, no, it's just God's blessing. <laughs> that's all we can say. I deserve hell. It's God's blessing that he led me to, or, you know, led me to the gospel and, and, and I got saved and, and he's, he's, he's helped increase me. So any increase that I've had, it's all God. And that's what he's saying here. Verse six. So we ought to all plant. We ought to all water. And let God give the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything or uh, he that watereth anything, but God giveth increase. So if we come back uh, from out soul winning or from inviting somebody that we work with, things like that, that's great. Okay? Uh, and, but we ought not go around and say, I had three visitors here. You didn't have anything, so that makes me a better Christian than you. Mm -mm. God is just blessing. That's what this, this whole chapter is about. Then he goes on and says here, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Both servants, both working and doing what God created to them. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So God, he's the one that gives the increase, but he will bless you for doing your part. Of planting seeds and watering seeds, he'll, he'll bless you for that. For we are laborers together with God. And we, we get to be a part of it. Paul was awesome and Apollos was awesome. But what made them awesome was their relationship with God. And God blessing what they did. It says here, for we are labors together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. He's the one that does it. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and the another buildeth thereupon. Let, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. And so, of course, you know, hopefully, unless Jesus comes back, this church will be a lighthouse 25, 30, 40 years from now. And there will be a new, new guy standing here. And there'll be new people in the pew, Lord willing, uh, and, unless Jesus comes back. And that's what he's saying here, that the person that was building needs to just take heed, be what he needs to be, but let God give the increase. God give the increase. Four, verse 11, for other foundations can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So nobody can preach another gospel. Nobody can say, okay, let's just start this religion thing all over and start a new religion. Nobody can do that. It's been, the foundation is laid. You can only get to heaven by this, this, this foundation here. Verse 12, Now if any man build up upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble, uh, you know, if we're like, okay, we've got it figured out. We're going to do it a little different. Uh, every man's work will be made manifest by the day shall clear, declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work with what sort it is. In other words, if they did it for God's glory, it will stand and God will bless them for it. If they did it for their own glory or for their own prestige or for their own uh, acknowledgement, things like that, it'll be burned up. And then it says in verse 14, if any man's work abide which is that he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. So if you did it for God's glory, you will get that reward. If any man's work shall be burned, uh, he shall suffer loss. Uh, but for he himself will be saved, yet so by the, as by the fire. So in other words, if a person saved, got Jesus Christ in their heart, and they do everything else from that point on in the flesh, to get their own recognition, it will all be burned up. There will not be a reward. They will be in heaven, but they won't be a reward. So that's why we've got to let God give the increase. Uh, and now you know, are you not, that you are the temple of God, and that uh, the Spirit God dwelleth in you? If any man d d defile the temple of God, he, he shall God or him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which is the temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. Uh, if any man among you seemeth to be wise uh, in this world, let him become a fool. Uh, the Bible tells us to be fools for Christ's sake, uh, that he might be wise. 
Uh, and for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise into their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. So again, there's a lot of people that are, I would say, intelligent. I would say have a lot of knowledge. But they're trusting in their knowledge. I've got the Bible mastered. I've got it all figured out. So I'm going to help people. Mm, it's still God giving, giving the increase. Therefore, let no man glory in men. Uh, for these things are, are yours. Whether Paul, Apollos, Cephas, the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ, and God, uh, Christ is God. So we see this whole chapter here is talking about let God give the increase. So anything that we do, study the Bible, let God give the increase. Pray some prayers, let God give the increase. Pass out some tracts, let God give the increase. Uh, pray for each other, let God give the increase. We just need to do our part, and God will do His part. So we're going to look here, and in, in the way of introduction, uh, there was three groups of people right here. Uh, there was those people that uh, they had not increased at all, and he was getting on to them a little bit at the beginning. He said, I've been preaching, I've been praying, I've been witnessing, I've been teaching, I've been doing all this, and you're all at the same exact level as when we started, verses 1 and 2. It says here, neither yet can, are ye able to do it now. I want to give you some meat, but you don't, still have no teeth. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're like somebody that needs meat or ba uh, milk. Uh, you haven't grown. Uh, and so he's getting on to them. And then there's those that have increased, but they increased on their own ability. They, you know, a lot of people can go to church and they can get the church lingo down. They can get the church look down. They can get the, you know, when to say amen at the right time. Nothing more embarrassing than that. You know, somebody says something, uh, brother so-and-so died. Hey, man. Oh, they, they said it at the wrong time. Okay. Uh, like, oops, uh, you know, let's, let, you know, we, when we can go. So in other words, we can get the church lingo down, we can get the way we behave down and all the things down, but we're doing it in our own power. Uh, you know, we're, we haven't increased. We've just gotten smarter on when to say what, when, but we're not increased. Then there's that third, peop, the third group that they had done their part and they had allowed God to do his part, so they increased. So first group of people hadn't increased at all. Second group of people increased, but just in their knowledge. Not in God's blessing. Third group of people increased in their knowledge, ability, but God had given the increase. In other words, the Bible calls it this, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In other words, they looked right, sounded right, acted right. Oh man, they've got to be super Christian. But they were denying the power thereof. They're doing it in their own power. So that was the three types of people. So uh, if you want to turn, if you, if you don't, I'll just read it to you. But I'm going to go to Colossians 2. Uh, Colossians 2, we're going to look at another place where the Bible says about God giving the increase. That's the key. In your individual life, if you're going to be blessed, you're going to have to let God do the increase. In our church, if we're going to be blessed, God's going to have to do it. So in verse uh, 9 of chapter 2 of Colossians, it says here, <clears throat> excuse me, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the God, uh, Godhead bodily. So Jesus, he's got all the power. It's indwelling in Him. Verse 10, and ye are complete in Him. So you get saved, He starts growing in you, that's how you get complete. Which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom ye are also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting uh, off the body of the sins and the flesh and the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him. We talked about this, buried in the likeness of His death. So our sins were crucified with Christ. Our, our desires, our life is all... Buried with Christ, but we're raising up. It says here, wherein ye also writ, risen with him through the faith and the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. So that picture of baptism, I believe Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again. And it's also a picture that I'm going to die to self, die to my flesh, die to, die to sin, and I'm going to raise up to walk as much like Christ as possible. That's how we get the increase. Uh, and then verse 13, and being dead in your sins and uncircumcised in your flesh, hath quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you which is contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross all those sins it was nailed to the cross having spoiled the principalities and the powers he made show them openly triumphantly triumphing over them in it let no man therefore judge you in meat uh, because if I'm saved I'm saved nobody can judge that uh, and then it says here, and you drink in respect of the holy days and the new moons and the Sabbath days, uh, which are the shadows of the things to come, but the body of Christ, let no man beguile you. So all those things that people put 
uh, I guess, respect to or importance to. It's all about God giving the increase. It's not keeping the holy day that's going to get you a reward. It's not keeping the holy day that's going to make you better than anybody else. It's God's power. He said, don't let people beguile you with all that stuff. Verse 17, which are the shadow of things to come, but the body of Christ. Let no man beguile you uh, of your reward in the voluntary human, uh, humility and the worshiping of angels, uh, intruding in those things which had not seen, vainly puffed up uh, in the fleshly mind. That's not the increase. That's not where you get all this. Verse 19, here it is. And not holding the head uh, from which all the body but joins, but the bands having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increasing of God. So what's going to make us individually a better Christian? It's not keeping holy days or saying different prayers or doing all these different things. Don't let Satan beguile you with that. What's going to make us a better individual, better Christian is God giving the increase. The church, I, I think... Praise God for parades, and we got soaked in doing it. Uh, praise God for door-to-door -door visitation that we do every other week. Praise God for Ready Fest, all the things that we do. But that's not what makes, makes it happen. That's not what makes it increase. That's not what, what makes God bless. It's Him, Him blessing our efforts, Him doing it. That's who gives the increase. So we see in the Bible that the, 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 the uh, pattern here is God giving the increase. Now, you won't have to turn there, but in Luke 2, you find the Christmas story. Later on down the road in the Christmas story, we see that the Bible says in verse 52, and Jesus increased. So we see in the first two places that God gives the increase, that's where the blessing comes from. Even in Jesus' life, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, retarded. He was not uh, you know, slow in, in his growth process. No, he, he increased. Verse 52 says this, and Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God, in favor with man. And so all four of these areas, what we need to do is, God, you bless me in my knowledge, my wisdom. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to go to Sunday school. I'm going to listen to the pastor as he's preaching. Uh, I'm going to have my personal devotions. I'm even going to have some uh, outside things that I study. I want you to increase so you can, again, come to church, go to Sunday school, have devotions, study your Bible. But unless God increases it, it's going to just be up for naught. We need God to help us. Uh, and then same thing, I want you to increase me in stature. Now, of course, we talked about that a while ago. We're going to get older. We're going to get bigger. We're going to get heavier. Uh, that's just normal. But that also that stature may mean our testimony. Uh, as we grow, and if we do have a testimony that that's a godly young lady, or that's a godly man, or that's a, that's a, a, a godly teenager, uh, it's God giving the increase. Because if it's up to us, we're going we're gonna to lose it. We're going to make a mistake. We're going to get people to think, mm, they're not the Christian that I thought they were. But if God's given the increase, He helps us keep our testimony. So our stature in people's mind also. Then that relationship with God and that relationship with man, we'll look at it real quick. Jesus increased in these four areas. One, wisdom. Uh, the Bible has lots to say about wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, now that... I don't think God wants us to go around like maybe biting our fingernails or uh, 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 like God's going to just stomp us out. I think it's more of a reverence than a scare. Now, God could take us out. Uh, he could stomp us. He, he has that ability. He has that right. But I think it's more of a respect and a reverence. Uh, so when we start respecting and reverence God, we're starting to become wise. That's God giving the increase. Proverbs 1.5 says this, A wise man will hear... And will increase in learning. A wise man of understanding, we talked about that this morning, shall attain unto wise counsel. Okay, I'm going to read that verse again. A wise man will hear and he will increase. He's going to get smarter. And he'll have, he'll have understanding. But then it says here, he shall attain unto wise counsel. So that wise person will attain. That means he will listen to. There's a lot of people that will maybe come to church or they'll go to a class and they'll sit there and they'll listen. And they're like, and they're more, they're more uh, uh, antagonistic with their comments. They're more suspect. Mm -hmm. uh, but a wise person will attain into wise counsel. It didn't say a wise person will argue with wise counsel or give their opinion to wise counsel or art, you, know, uh, you know, just um, debate wise counsel. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 10, only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Proverbs 9, 9, give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. So uh, just 
It has to be God's increase. I call them this. There's educated morons in this world. I mean, they're smart. I mean, they can add anything, subtract anything, divide anything. They can do all that stuff. They can, they can uh, perfectly diagram a sentence. Uh, they know history out, you know, every date. They got it memorized, things like that. They got a whole lot going on up here. But if they don't believe in God, they're an educated moron. They're going to take all that knowledge they got in their head and they're going to split hell wide open. Educated moron. And so we see that God has to give the increase. If they, you know, again, there's not a lot going on up here in, in this body, okay? Uh, but there's, there's some people out there, they got, they got the big noodle up there. And they're smart. And they know all kinds of stuff. But if they don't let God increase that, educated moron. Uh, they're, they're right in their own eyes is what the Bible calls them. They're smart. They got it all figured out. This is how I think. But if they leave God out and don't let Him give the increase, they're not wise. So Jesus increased in wisdom. Secondly, we see here He increased, increased in stature. Yeah, He got bigger. Uh, you know, the, the one time when they went back uh, to the marriage supper, uh, you know, and then He started teaching in the temple. Most people think He was a teenager, and they were astonished uh, at His wisdom. Uh, and so in people's eyes, He was getting a little bit more mature. He was getting a little bit more all together. He wasn't just a you know, pimply-faced teenager that didn't know anything. And so they, he grew in their eyes uh, and in his maturity and uh, in his respect, his testimony. And so our, our testimony ought to grow in our family and our, with our friends and our coworkers, things like that. Then also he, he, he increased with God. I'll read a, a verse here in, in Psalm 115. Uh, Psalm 115 verses 9 uh, through 18, let's see here, there we go. Um, it says, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord, he is your help, uh, or he is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, he is your help and, he, and, and your shield. Uh, the Lord hath the mind for, mindful of us, he will bless us, and he will bless the house of Israel, he will bless the house of Aaron, he will bless them that fear him both small and great, and the Lord shall increase, there it is, increase you more and more and your children. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and the earth. So according to Psalm 115 here, obviously back in the house of Israel, in the house of Aaron, anything that happened good in that, it was God blessing them. Then it goes on to say that He's your shield too. He's your help too. And if anything happens good in your and your area with God it'll be him so God, Jesus increased in wisdom stature favor with God and then favor with man also uh, first Thessalonians uh, fit, let's see here three first Thessalonians three I'll read you one verse there uh, first Thessalonians three verses 12 and 13 listen to what it says it says here and the Lord make ye to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as you do toward them uh, to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable and, ho and holy uh, in holiness before God even as your father and, and, and coming uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints so he grew, he actually helped in his relationship with God and with all the saints so God's the one that gives the increase in these four areas he helped Jesus in his wisdom he helped Jesus in his stature he helped Jesus with his relationship with God and he helped Jesus with the relationship with man that's the introduction I'll give you my points real quick so if we allow God to help us in any of these areas, in our wisdom, in our stature, our maturity, our testimony, and our relationship with God, and our relationship with man, these things will increase. And we'll look at them real quickly. First of all, in Luke 17, uh, Luke 17, verse 5, it says that our faith will increase. We mentioned that this morning. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So we have to have the Word of God to increase our faith. Uh, Luke 17, 5 says this, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. So these men that uh, went around and preached the gospel and, 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 and talked about Christ everywhere, they were asking for help to increase their faith. So I want to ask God to increase my faith. Uh, I want to be a better soul winner. So increase my faith, God. I want to be a better Bible, uh, not scholar, but just a studier of the Bible. Increase my faith. I want to have better relationships. God, increase my faith. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, 15 says this, Not boasting of the things which is without our measure, that is, that is of the man's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, 
that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. And so we see here God's the one that has to increase our faith. We ought to ask God to increase our faith. The next thing we're going to look at that God will increase is in Acts 6. Acts 6, and it says here in Acts 6 that uh, verse 7, I'm sorry, we'll read verse 4 first. Verse 4 says this, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And so the apostles asked for increase of faith. Now these guys in the book of Acts, some of the same guys, they were saying, I'm, we're going to pray continually, but we want God to help us in the Word. Look at, look at verse 7. It says, and the Word of God increased in them. And so they wanted to uh, increase their faith. They wanted to increase their knowledge of the Word of God, increase their using of it, uh, their obeying of it, uh, their sharing it. Uh, they wanted all that to increase about the Word of God. The third thing is that uh, church members uh, started to increase in verse, uh, chapter 16 of Acts. So all these guys, obviously they started growing. God was giving the increase. He was blessing. Their knowledge of the Bible grew. Uh, their faith grew. And then because of that, in verse, uh, chapter 16, verses 1 through 5, it says, Then came to Derbe and to Lystra, and behold, a, a certain disciple there was named Timotheus, and the son of the certain women, or woman, which was a Jewess, uh, and believed, but the father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren, that we are uh, at Lystra and Iconium. He would Paul have to go forth with him, and he took and circumcised him because of the Jews, which were those of the quarters, and they knew all that his father was a Greek. And verse 4 says, And when they had went through the cities, they delivered the decrees for to keep, that they ordained the apostles and the elders in, in Jerusalem. Verse 5, And so were the churches established in faith and increased in number daily. So we see here all these things. If, if, if your faith is going to increase, it's going to have to be God that increases it. If your knowledge in the Word of God increases, it's going to have to be God that increases it. If your church increases, it's going to have to be God that increases it. Um, and so there's, there's all kinds of, I've taken classes on them. Uh, there are things that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to pray. Pray you the Lord of the harvest. We're supposed to pray. Do that. But God's going to have to increase our prayers. Study to show yourself approved so you can rightly divide the Word of God. We ought to study that book so that we can witness to others and so we can talk to others about Jesus, things like that. But it's God that's going to have to give the increase. We ought to do our part to invite, uh, but it's God going to have to do the increase. Uh, you know, again, I've seen this. I've went out and let's say, let's say I just invited 12 people to come. And nine out of the 12 said, oh yeah, we'll be there tomorrow. I get here and I'm looking. None of those nine show up. But all of a sudden, there will be like six that nobody invited that are sitting here in the pews. You know what that is? God giving the increase. <laughs> he just blessed it. And so if I said, well, I'm just going to stop and God's going to send those six. No. We got to do our part to invite the nine that, don't, that said they were coming but didn't show. Then God's going to bless us with the six that nobody had anything to do with it. God just put it on the heart to come. That's how it works. We have to do our part. Uh, and sometimes it, it is one of those people that we invite. But God just gives it. So we see here that all these things increase. Their faith increased. The word of God increased in their heads and in their hearts. And the church has increased. Why? Because God gave the increase because they did their part. I'm going to read you these last ones. I'm just going to give you the point and I'll read the verse. Point, verse. Here's other things in the Bible that when these people, not like the church at Corinth here, that were still babes in Christ. I want to speak to you spiritually, but I can't. I got to still keep giving you the milk. Uh, you know, don't let your spiritual growth be retarded. Let's grow. And so we grow to the point our faith increased, the Word of God increased, our churches increased. Here's some other things that will increase because of those things if we have that mindset. Our knowledge of God will increase. Colossians 1.10, it says this, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Uh, again, I've been saved since I was 10. Uh, I, I've tried my best to do my part of listening in church, listening in college, doing per personal study, things like that. And I want my knowledge of God to increase. I like finding what some people called nuggets in the Bible. Oh, I've never seen that. 
Or if you're praying for a certain thing, God, I really need an answer. And all of a sudden it's like it, it's like underlined, bold print, highlighted, jumping off the page at you. And you're like, whoa, that is awesome. Our knowledge of God will increase. Number five, our, our knowledge of Christ will increase. Matthew eleven twenty-nine. 29. It says here, learn of me. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart. Our knowledge of Christ, how Christ will handle each situation. Uh, when you see somebody that's, uh, I guess, given the opportunity to blow their stack, and they don't. What? What? How did that happen? Their knowledge of Christ. A soft, turn, a soft answer turns away wrath. Their, 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 their knowledge of Christ is coming out. Uh, they didn't get mad. They didn't get embarrassed. They just... Their knowledge of Christ is increased. Uh, number six, increasing in the knowledge of His will. We talked about that a little bit this morning. Uh, Colossians 1.9 says this, that ye might be filled with knowledge of His will. You keep studying, you let your faith grow, you let the Word of God grow, you let uh, the church grow, and we will increase in the knowledge of His will. Number seven, uh, increasing in the knowledge of His love. Ephesians 3.19, it says this, to know the love of Christ which patheth knowledge. Was past, you know, the Bible talks about it and passes all understanding. We can't get it. Uh, we get the understanding of His love. Number eight, increasing in the, in the knowledge of His power. Uh, we talked about a whole sermon about that, the power of God. This is found in Philippians 3.10. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. It's talking about increasing. I want to know God as my Savior. But I want to get to know Him so much that I understand and I know and I can even feel that same power that resurrected Him from the dead. Our knowledge of His power will increase. Next, the increasing of His glory. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says this, that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And so obviously as we grow, our knowledge of His glory will grow. And the last one, the increasing of the knowledge of His purpose. John 16, 13. And it says this, when the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. So all these words uh, guide and increase and uh, you know, you, you'll get stronger, things like that. It's all increasing. And it's God. Uh, it's not Apollos. It's not Paul. Even though they were great fellows. And definitely those guys shouldn't have gotten an argument about Paul's my preacher. Well, Apollos is my preacher. Well, this is my... No. It's just all about God. Um, and again, I, I, I've seen some pastors... <laughs> Uh, again, and we're all, I guess, capable of this. In other words, letting it go to our head. I don't want increasing knowledge and let that go to my head. I don't want increasing power and let that go to my head. I don't want to ever come in here and say, y'all, you just listen to me and your life will be perfect. Y'all, just act like me and y'all's life will be perfect. Well, that principle about Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If you have to do that, go ahead, just like Paul said. But what Paul was doing was, look at him, look at him, look at him. Paul wasn't saying, look at me, look at me. I was a sinner. I was killing Christians. I was persecuting churches. I got saved on the road to Damascus. So if you need to look at me for a while, all you're going to see me is saying, look at him, look at him, look at him. He's the one that's going to give you the increase. Increase in your knowledge, increase in your power, increase in all that thing. All the things. It's all about God. And we ought to all want to increase. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. We'll have a short invitation. And um, I was going to read the portion of Scripture before we had this. You can, you can not bow your eyes for a second. Bow your head and open your eyes. There we go. Mess that up. There it is. All right, I'm going to read this portion of Scripture. This is kind of like, I guess, in preparation for the Lord's Supper. Uh, we're going to come down in just a minute, and we're going to take the bread and remember His body. We're going to drink the juice and remember His blood. Uh, but in 1 Corinthians uh, 11, verse 23, it says this, For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you. And the Lord Jesus, the same might be with, with you betrayed, took the bread. And of course, this was what they called the Last Supper before the Lord went back to heaven and so forth. It says here, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which was broken of you, or for you, this do in remembrance of me. Verse 25, And after that same manner, he took the cup, 
And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, of course, that's what we're going to do here in just a second. But I want you to listen to these verses. This is about the invitation here. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do in the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, show the Lord till death uh, is come. Wherefore, whatsoever you eat, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup in the Lord unworthily, this is what I'm getting to, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in other words, he's saying, don't take the Lord's Supper if you're going to do it unworthily. Now, none of us are worthy, but if we are saved, that makes us worthy. If we have no unconfessed sin, that makes us worthy. Don't take it being unsaved. You can't take it if you're not saved. Don't take it with, with sin in your heart. Don't take it unworthily. But verse 28 says here, But let every man or woman examine himself. So you're the only one that knows. So that let him eat that bread and drink at that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh it unworthily eateth and drinketh it damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. And that's not talking about sleeping like we're going to sleep in a little while. That's talking about death. Verse 31, for, the, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So in other words, you're supposed to judge yourself and examine yourself before you take this. Don't let God have to do it. So now I've said that, we will all stand and have our heads bowed, our eyes closed. And uh, obviously, I want you to ask God to help increase you this year, increase your faith, increase the word. But if there's something between you and the Lord, come down here and deal with that before we take the Lord's Supper. Invitation's open. Be seated.